Hello again, I am Blunty, and that is the MSI GE62VR7RF Camo Squad Limited Edition Laptop. How's that for a mouthful of a name? It came out as a tie-in thing with Ghost Recon Wildlands, and when I first saw it in the press shots, I thought it looked a bit, well, a bit chintzy, to be honest with you guys. But then I laid eyes on one for realsies at Computex last month, and I changed my mind. So I wanted to take a closer look at it and churn some games through it. So here we are. Now I, personally speaking, am still not a big fan of camo styling, but I have to admit, to the eye, the print job on this thing is really quite nice, crisp, smooth, detailed, sharp, lovely. So I can easily see, if you are a big fan of military stylings and shooters, you'll dig this design. And it is certainly unique. I've never seen a laptop quite like it before. I've no idea how well it's actually selling compared to the standard black variants. I expect it's a pretty niche appeal. But hey, you know, heads up on this if you were interested in a camo-themed laptop, and like me, were initially a bit off-center based on the press shots, IRL, it looks damn nice, so give it a go. Now underneath the camo sits the rock-solid combo for a mid-size gaming laptop, a 7th gen Intel i7-7700 CPU, and a full-fat 6GB GeForce GTX 1060 with your choice of either a 1080p or 4K panel, depending on if content creation or gaming is your prime focus. And of course, the Cooler Boost 4 cooling system from MSI, which if you've seen my other reviews and looks at the other family members in this range of laptops from MSI, you'll know I am a big fan of. Pardon the pun. MSI's coolers work fantastic, keeping temperatures under control without getting obnoxiously loud. They balance that really nicely. It's one of my favorite things about their laptops, actually. Elsewhere around it, you've got three USB ports, an SD card reader, a USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 port, full-size HDMI out, and a mini display port. Again, much like its sister models, it's a nice balance of features and size and I.O. and all that kind of stuff, all weighing in at under 2.5 kilos, and with more than enough grunt to even kick around some high-end VR stuff like the HTC Vive. And as for actual real-world in-game performance, well, it's no shocker. I've become very familiar with the combo punch of the GTX 1060 and a 7th Gen i7 in a laptop, having tested a fistful of laptops now circling around that core combination. And it really is a nice sweet spot balanced between power and affordability. I am actually only going to show you a few games out of it, because frankly, I already know this combo kicks 1080p high and ultra-level gaming really nice, but I do have to show you something, don't I? So, Project Cars here, which you've been watching in high settings, swims happily above 60 frames per second, reaching into the 90s at times. You may notice a little bit of a stuttering here and there in this recorded gameplay. Something went a bit hinky with my capture, but the game, I assure you, actually ran smooth as buttered silk. Doom, another one of my favorite benchmarking games in ultra settings, also presented no issue at all. Although, personally, I'd squat down slightly to high settings, or some kind of combination between high and ultra settings for Doom, because even though you can't see more than 60 frames per second on the screen here, Doom really does start feeling crazy wonderful smooth when you let it run at high frame rates. And lastly, new to my suite of test games actually, Overwatch. And yes, I know, I'm a year late to Overwatch, but I finally gave in to my curiosity and the endless requests from you folk and my Twitch chat room to give it a go and use it in my review vids and the like. And so I did, and yes, I kind of like it, and yes, I still suck at it. Forgive my suck, won't you? I'm still settling into the game, and I'm not someone who has played much at all when it comes to modern online competitive arena shooters at all. So cringe if you must, but what we're interested in here is the performance, not how well I'm playing. <laughs> but my own inadequacy and defensiveness aside, Overwatch in a mix of high and ultra settings keeps itself pretty happily over 60 frames per second, reaching into the low 80s at times. And again, like Doom, more competitive types might like to sink some settings down a bit to push closer to 90 frames per second or above. Not because you actually see all those extra frames on a 60Hz refresh rate screen, but to pull a bit of frame by frame latency down, which does help you in these games. So yeah, just wanted to give the GE62 VR7RF Special Limited Edition Camo Squad Edition laptop thing, I, I think I said edition twice somewhere there, <laughs> I just wanted to give it some time in the sun, because I was impressed with how it looked once I got eyes on with it proper. And yeah, unsurprisingly from MSI, rock solid performer. 
Also, if you're after something slightly further down the chain as far as performance and budget go, over with the post on this video on my site at blunty.tv, I have a bit of a breakdown about this, which is the GL62M 7RDX model, carrying the GTX 1050 GPU, which will still game great with stuff like Overwatch at slightly lower settings than the 1060, of course, and it is designed more for you esports types. Now, I don't actually have time to give this model the full and proper video going over, but I did want to point it out to you guys, as I think it's the very last model in the current lineup of MSI laptops I hadn't had in hand yet. But you're seeing what Overwatch looks like playing on the GL62 right now. And if you're an Aussie, it's worth noting that this particular model is specifically exclusive to JB Hi-Fi. So if you're looking for it, that's where you're going to find it. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time. Thank you.